Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarner with Weingarner Racing. This is a really short video. I wanted to show you the heads that are getting ready to go on to my 477 blower engine. These heads have actually been used before. If you've ever followed my career or progress, you'll know that I competed in Engine Master Challenge for several years. Well, in 2014, I built a 477 big block Chevy, and these were the heads that were on it when I competed. And it did okay at the competition. I'm not going to lie, it wasn't as good as it hoped for. My biggest mistake was I used a header that was way too big because at that time I didn't have much money, not that I do now, but I really had I had enough money to make the engine great, but not enough for the headers. So it sucked. So I actually brought a set of headers that are way too big and it killed the score. However, the engine itself was actually still really good. Even at that, I want to say I finished like 13th or 12th that year. Um which wasn't bad. Um, big blocks are hard to win, to do well with anyway. So, but anyway, what head I used was this one. And I should, let me just back up just a little bit. In case you're wondering how much, how much power it made. Well, it made 763 horsepower on that dyno. And that year, the only correction factor that was, they had was for weather. So when you think about a pump gas, 477 big block Chevy, 11 and a half to one compression ratio, and hydraulic roller nonetheless it 763 horsepower is great at the home dyno not dunsworth at a different dyno and actually made 807 it was pretty impressive and this camshaft was only like 247 261 it was kind of small lift was 774 so a little bit of lift on it not crazy lift but not like what others were running but really good power so what these heads are though is these are the AFR 305 heads, and I had ported them. So I'm gonna share what I've done, did to them, and what I've changed since then, or what's been done to them since then to make it work for this blower engine. So the, initially what I did is, the port work is exactly the same. So what you see is what you get. It has a 2350 intake valve and a 1800 exhaust valve. Stock, that come 2250. Because this 477 is not like your normal 477 or what you guys are thinking, it's got a 45 bore, I can run a bigger intake valve, and that's why I chose to do so. So 2350 intake valve, 188 exhaust valve. The port work obviously is done. It's actually really well. I remember when I ported this, I actually used a humongously round or large diameter burr to do it because I wanted to experiment using that shape to make more of the corner radiuses. So in this one, I was actually intentionally trying to get more corner radius than what I usually do. And then, as you can see in the chamber, I did. I kept doing the same thing here. I actually put a burr only on this spot of the chamber because if you look at the chamber, that's the only spot that's got it. It actually was that way from whenever I did it at the competition as well. The idea was, oh, maybe it'll vaporize fuel a little better. Do I know if it did it or not? I don't know. I also did around the throat, which you could see there, which I do that on every head. This I just did on this one, and I that was the same way I competed with in the competition. Usually on methanol engines, which is what this is going to be, because this now is going to be a root supercharged deal, having the um, methanol going through it, I usually put it, that burr finish right there on the intake part anyway. So that's one of the things that was done. The other thing is now I've switched to, I mean, I had Freya valves in it before, but I now have a newer one. These are new ones. It's got a little bit thicker margin. But this is a difference. On the exhaust side before, when I had ran it, I had just used a nail head exhaust valve. Now this is a Ferreira special alloy exhaust valve to handle the heat from the blower, but this is what it is. So this one, because it's more of a tulip design, it actually flows a little bit better and worse. It kind of messed up the exhaust flow, but I didn't want to do any more additional port work. I just didn't got time for that and just didn't want to do it. So that's some of it, but let me flip it over and show you some of the other stuff that was done that I did that's probably a mistake, but you'll see. This will give you a view down the intake port so you can see. Now, the 305 has this humongous vein that comes through the top, and I had left that because, in all fairness, and it looks really funky when you look at it. See the short, remember, big blocks have a long runner and the short runner. If you look at it, got a bit of a twist to it there, it looks like, but no, it's more straight. Anyway, this is actually a nice thing on the roof because. Not a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of airspeed at the top at the entrance. As you go towards the center where the short side is, it's dropping down. So the air speeds are really slow at the peak and faster at the floor. So initially, real fast here. When it gets further in the port, faster at the short side, obviously. So I just left the vein. I've always had it in there, and that's how it's flowed. But I wanted to show you that real quick before I show you this other part. But 
case you've never seen an Air FR 305 what they have in it. This is the last thing I'm going to show you, and it comes from this view. You could see, by the way, I didn't make this thing look beautiful at all. You could still see where I left some of the ridges. Usually, I'd, on a customer's head, I port that all smooth and stuff, or 60 grit, not smooth. But this is an older AFR 305 head, and here's how you can kind of tell. One besides it says V2. You see this right here? That's the Edelbrock logo, because Edelbrock used to cast the heads for AFR. AFR, by the way, when AFR would get them, they'd just be a blob, so AFR did every bit of machine work. They were simply cast the Edelbrock. Um, that since changed. Now it's Buddy Barr does them, and I think they might have even switched since then. But on the early editions of this head, they this whole part here was solid. If you get a new one now, you'll have a bunch of holes through here, and the reason for that is oil drain back like it is now. This the that hole there and this big old slot here I added, and the reason for that is because literally the only, this is solid. So if oil gets here, it stays trapped there. It just has the only way it can come down is through the push rods. Remember, it's tilted at an angle, so the chance of its draining is pretty slim. The other thing is crankcase pressure. It doesn't give enough to vent out to the valve covers, so I added a few holes. The newer ones, by the way, have hole, hole, hole. They have holes all over this thing. Um, so I added a much bigger hole than another one here. But the new ones have like four holes. So there's that. But I also added one more here. So this is the drain. I added a hole here and made that whole slot bigger for where the oil drains down. However, this is the driver's side head. So I added this. Now you probably aren't going to do this, but I am. When the head's at it tilted at an angle, the oil usually pulls about in this area. And then it kind of drains down. So what this is, this is a drain line. And you can tell I tapped it. That's what it looks like from the outside. Now I put it at the back of the head. And the reason why is once you take off, the G-forces push it all the way to the back. And that pushes it right to this area. And then that should, that this right here is tapped. I'll have an AN fitting. And that drains back into the oil pan. So instead of draining down this way, which it still can, it's draining back towards the pan so they can get a quicker return to the pan. The idea is that I wouldn't have any oiling problems upon acceleration and whatnot because we'll have a better chance for draining. That's the only other thing that was added. So the cam that's going to go in this is an 850 lift on the intake and 867 on exhaust. But I want to show you because these valves are a little bit different. I did flow the head, and here's what it flowed. It's not bad. Now this is flowing on a bigger bore, 4625 bore. I don't have a 45 bore. This is the closest one to that that I have. If you look at 400, it's 293 on the long runner, 292 on the short runner. Fantastic. 500, 335, and 329. This head, by the way, is only 323 cc's. This is not hogged out to the max. Um, that's it, 323 cc's. If you look at the peak flow on the long runners, 412 CFM at 800, and then the short runner does a little bit better at 386, but that's at one inch. It has an 850 lift, so you're like, oh my gosh, look, it drops down to 397. You should have only done an 800 lift. Nope, 850 lift, because it'll see that spot more than if I had just an 800 lift. Exhaust is okay. It's 295. It's actually pretty good. But when I float it, the stability of the port on the exhaust is not good. And in other words, what I'm saying is, if you don't have electronics on your flow bench, like I have that black box, and I've got Flowcom on the Superflow, if you don't have electronics, you're going to miss a lot of this. Because what I do with this one is, when I have the signs running, I make that black box, which, by the way, there's still another pressure sensor in here. I'll have it take 15 readings. So it'll take a reading, take another reading, take another reading, and it's doing within seconds. And then it takes all those readings and averages it. And from that, you can tell how, much, how different it was from the best to the lowest in that 15 readings. The exhaust on these last two points got off by 1.3%, which was kind of high. Um, I never did that before, and it's probably because now I have a tulip exhaust valve. So when I had a nail head exhaust valve, it had enough area, but the tulip's taking up the area in the port. Am I going to change it? Absolutely not. One, I don't have time to work the head, and it is what it is. I think it's going to do fine anyway, but I wanted to... You wouldn't see that just looking at the flow numbers. This is one of those things where there's more to a flow bench than just flow numbers. So this doesn't show up on the flow numbers. It looks like it just keeps gaining. But when you look at the stability, like how much did it change? It says 1.3% or actually 1.6, 1.3, 1.2. And the others are like 0.2%. You can tell it's the port is not exactly stable and it's not exactly happy. 
and it's mostly because of the exhaust valve. In all fairness, I probably should do some more work on the exhaust ports, but I'm not going to because I don't have time. And I think this is going to be good enough for what I wanted to do. It's going to make gobs of power anyway. So anyway, there's your little video about the head that I share it with you guys. You guys remember, I'm no Superman. I do not port cast iron. I don't know anybody that does. You guys take care.